So many people ask me why I have so many different credit cards and the reason why I have so many credit cards is because, but wait a minute, I really, really, really need you to smash that like button for obvious reasons, the YouTube algorithm. And always make sure to watch the video from beginning till end or you'll just be missing out and the information won't make any sense. So it's best to watch from the beginning till end. I assure you, you'll understand everything if you do. Anyways, the reason why I have so many credit cards is one, I actually got pre-approved for many of these credit cards because I already built a relationship with the credit issuer by opening up a checking or savings account if they provide one. Many credit issuers are also banks and so by building a banking relationship, you can easily either get pre-approved or have an easier time getting approved when you do apply. And also you're more inclined to getting things like better interest rates, higher credit limits, easier time of approval, and also promotions being set to you because you have a good standing relationship with the bank. So the banks will provide its customers with like an insider score. And with that insider score, they get various offers, benefits, and promotions by being a member. So by having multiple bank accounts, I just got multiple credit cards and I didn't really go out of my way to get approved for those credit cards, but I did go out of my way to get the bank accounts. I have a video explaining why having two to three bank accounts is important to have. And you can click on that video in the description below. It's over there. I recommend checking that video out after this video. So simply by opening up a checking savings account or even like a CD or brokerage account or GIC if you're in Canada, you built a relationship with that bank a year or two later, they may offer you some pre-approvals, uh, promotions, offers, upgrades, credit limit increases if you already have a credit card and etc. So two, the second reason why I have so many credit cards is cashback slash points optimization. By basically funneling my credit cards to the credit card that offers the highest cash back on that certain purchase, then I get the highest return. Certain cards have, let's say 4% on gas. So I'll use that 4% card on gas. Another card will have like 3% on dining out and restaurants and like fast food. So I'll use that card for my dining out. Another card has, let's say 2% on reoccurring bills. Uh, so I'll use that for like my phone bill or any other utility or monthly bills, right? And there's a lot, um, there's groceries, there's gas, there's everyday purchases, online purchases, Amazon purchases, travel purchases, which includes like flight tickets, airplane tickets, even like things like taxi and Ubers. So by having those cards, you kind of optimize your cash back as high as you can. This can be like anywhere from uh, possibly 5% to as I would say at least 1%. You're definitely gonna get at least 1% if you funnel all your purchases through your credit cards. And if you funnel it by optimizing it, then you can get somewhere between two to 5% on average, let's just say 3% on all your purchases, which is pretty good, right? Especially if you live in like more expensive cities, that's a lot of returns back to you in your pocket. It could turn out to be like a free flight or investment money that you just put in long-term and build money on top of that. So the third reason why I have so many credit cards is the benefits and offers. Not all credit cards offer the same exact benefits and perks as other credit cards. So certain cards have like travel insurance policies and other types of like product insurance policies. Some credit cards offer travel credit. Some credit cards offer uh, discounting prices on certain stores. Some credit cards offer extended warranties. So uh, or the amount can be different. Like one credit card offers like extended warranty by three years, another one doubles it um, by a maximum, of, let's say one year. So there are a lot of perks. And by having multiple credit cards, you maximize the amount of insurance you have in a way and the diversity of the perks, okay? So if you have two credit cards that offer extended warranty, they usually have a cap limit. It could be like $20,000, $60,000, $100,000. And so by having like multiple credit cards, you increase that limit like tenfold in a way. And you get access to more like insurance policies, get access to more benefits. And by optimizing your purchases, then you get benefits. For example, my BMO World Elite MasterCard gives me 1.5% cash back on all everyday purchases. So every purchase, this is basically the highest in Canada. And at the same time, it also provides me with extended warranty by up two or three years. And 
Also extended purchase assurance by like 180 days. All I know is it does offer a great extended warranty and purchase assurance along with a great high cash back. Because in Canada, most of our credit cards don't offer actually 2%, but more so like 1% for everyday purchases. And in the US, there's multiple options. There's like, you know, Key Bank, there's Chase, there's Capital One Double, right? You got like three different ones that give you 2% on everyday purchases. So I basically use this card for any high-end purchases that I want extended warranty on. And then for example, my Tangerine credit card gives me a $1,000 mobile device insurance that's for free. All I have to do is make the purchase on this credit card and I get it, right? So I just like optimize the, the purchases on which credit card. I would say most of my purchases are done through this one card just because of the extended warranty and purchase insurance and the high cash back. However, if it's like gas or groceries or um, a reoccurring bill, then I will use different cards. For example, my Platinum Visa CIBC dividend card is 4% on gas and groceries. So I would you know, put my gas and groceries on there. And then also my Tangerine card gives me 2% on reoccurring bills. And then another example would be like my Simply Visa card. I will put uh, all my dining out and uh, restaurants on it because I get 4% back. That's like pretty, pretty good. I also have a US RBC Visa card and this is for all my US purchases that I just funnel because it gives me points and I don't have to deal with any foreign transaction fees and keep everything standard. So it's like I'm pretty optimized in all my credit cards and for all the purchases. And so thus it gives me a high return in a way. And, then, and I would say it's passive because it's just you know, swiping a card. So the fourth reason is that by having access to a diverse amount of credit cards, meaning from different credit issuers, you get access to a higher credit limit. So what does this mean? This means two things. One, you have higher purchasing power, meaning you can, you can purchase more than you can afford 10, 20, 30 fold. Obviously, Credit without cash flow is kind of pointless. So don't just, you know, build your credit and not focus on cash flow. But at the same time, build your credit so that when you do have the cash flow or when you do have the assets to capitalize on a, let's say, $200,000 credit line or a half a million dollar credit line or $2 million credit line or even a $10,000 credit line, you'll be ready for it because many people don't build their credit lines until it's, I would say, it's too late or uh, until they get that push. It's like, oh, it's time to buy a house. But you still haven't built your credit or it's time to get a loan or investment or something and you haven't even built your credit, right? You should do it now so that when you do need it, it will be a breeze to get. So you will get higher credit limits and thus higher purchasing power. And it also lowers your utilization because now let's say you have access to like a thousand dollars, you now have access to $90,000, right? And if you only purchase $1,000 a month, each month on your credit card, you know, 1,000 divided by $90,000 is way less than a 3% utilization. So it's like, you're never ever gonna go above that utilization ratio in a way, right? So by having access to more credit, you lower your credit utilization, which is good for your credit score, which is also great for your credit report. So that's reason five, it's great for credit utilization by increasing your credit limit you decrease the ratio between credit used and credit available. So reason six on why I have so many credit cards is a variety of sources, okay? Now you don't need to go crazy, but it's up to you. I would prefer at least three in a way. That way, you know, if one card fails, you have another card as a backup. So it's like you don't wanna just rely on one credit card or, and likewise on one bank account because things just happen and you don't want to deal with that for a week or two weeks or three weeks or a month or two months or possibly even a year, right? So, you know, by spreading your credit to different providers and spreading your cash by different banks, you're less inclined by, you know, being at the mercy of the bank or the credit issuer. And then reason seven is insider score, which is like similar to reason one, which is by being a member or, or by building a relationship with a bank, you build your insider score. And so by having a credit card by a different credit issuer, you're building a relationship with that credit issuer. And that also means an easier time getting other services they provide, whether it's business credit or loans or car financing or mortgages or investments or brokerage accounts or margin accounts or you know futures trading or whatever, you get an easier time signing up for those and, and you'll get easily approved than the person you know who doesn't have it. And so now you're asking me like, how do you maintain, you know, all of these credit cards in terms of, you know, payments? So the easiest way is to do it by 
having pre-authorized debit set up, right? So when the money gets taken from your checking account at the payment due date. But I understand some people don't have, let's say cash in their bank account all the time. And so they don't want to do that because, you know, you're going to have payments bouncing and, you know, payments not going through and it, it doesn't look good. So the other method is basically organizing and archiving all your credit card and banking details in a orderly fashion, whether this is physically on paper or digitally through like a cloud service like Excel and using like password managers, then you could do it manually because you need to know the passwords and usernames. You got to do it securely. You need to also have access to like backend information too, which is like, you know, the security questions, the, the checking account number, right? If you want to do it manually, you basically need to keep track of everything. And you can also use tools such as like YNAB or Mint or I even think Waze. That's a great way of aggregating all your accounts into one and then having one central database to see everything. So I would prefer method one by doing pre-authorized debit and just, you know, having the machines automatically do it. But if you don't have the cash in your checking account to pay off those credit cards, then you're going to have a lot of issues with bouncing. So you may have to do it manually in the beginning. If you're doing manually, use password managers, keep your account information, archive it, and then you should be fine. And then last but not least, credit cards also help with business. Many of us start with using our personal credit cards and by having access to personal credit, it's basically like business credit too. It's not so much different. People say you can't use your personal credit card for business expensive. Yeah, you can. You just record what's business and what's personal. That's it. Uh, that's like literally all you have to do and that's totally fine. So why would you use it for a business? One, cash reserves. So whenever there's an issue in a sense of like a delay, a payment being held, right? Like a rolling reserve on a merchant account, right? They take 30% of all payments. Well, you know, maybe you need that money for your business to function properly. How are you going to do it? Use your credit, use your credit card, right? Use your credit sources, get a business credit up and running, right? But credit card is a great way for business operation expenses because you get that grace period, right? And since it's reoccurring, you can just easily pay it off and then use it again, pay it off and use it again. And then for scaling too, because sometimes you need money right now to scale your business right now because it's the great opportunity now to do it. If you're an entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're not an entrepreneur, then you're not gonna know what I'm talking about. And it's basically preparation meets opportunity. There's a great opportunity to put money in. You don't necessarily have all the money right now, but you will eventually get it because of cash flow, right? Let's just say you have $1,000 at the end of each month within 12 months you're gonna have 12 grand that means you can easily invest 12 grand right now at bitcoin at 400 dollars rather than waiting one year it ends up becoming six grand which is now at fifty thousand dollars right so what i'm trying to say is credit also allows you to invest properly i also made a video on how to basically invest credit properly it's in the link below in the video description and also with even your personal expenses it also helps with mediate, stabilizing, and growing your wealth. Things break down in your house, you need to repair it, you might not have the cash on hand, boom, you'll have the credit. Eventually you can pay it off because you have the cash flow for it, you'll have a job, you have some type of security, or you have some type of asset or employment, right? So credit's really useful when you have cash flow. It's, it's not necessarily the best thing when you don't because it's like you gotta pay it back, but when you do have it, it just makes making wealth and stabilizing your wealth like a thousand times easier. And that's why I'm saying build your credit, use it properly. Like with anything, you just need to be educated on it. And once you are, you're gonna be raking in that money. So that's why I have so many credit cards. I'm just gonna quickly conclude. One, I built a lot of relationships with banks, thus I got pre-approved for credit cards. Two, cashback reward points optimization. Three, a lot of benefits and offers. And so I can diversify and optimize. Four, by diversifying my credit sources, I also have an easier time getting access to high credit limits. It's easier for one bank to hand out $10,000 to one person. Thus, it's easy for 10 banks to hand out $10,000 per one person just because they're diversifying the risk. It's one bank, one bank, one bank, one bank risking 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000 rather than just one bank giving you $100,000, right? So that's why it's easier to build your credit limit that way because it's less risk for the bank, but it's the same thing at the end of the day for you. Five, your credit utilization decreases because you have, you have a higher access to credit and thus by having access to a higher credit limit and you, your daily expenses stay the same prior to the increase of the credit limit, your credit utilization will go down, your credit score will go up and your credit report will look better. Seven, it will also build your insider score for the bank or the credit issuer that you got the credit card from and thus you'll get better approvals, better better interest rates, higher credit limits, and easier time just applying for services. And to properly maintain your credit cards, you should use auto payments. If not, you should definitely still use a password manager and some type of organization, a 
of your bank accounts. That way you're up to date with everything. And I provided like services such as Google Cloud Excel Sheets or uh, YNAB or Mint or Waze, any of these like accounting softwares. And then last but not least, it also helps with business cash flow issues, personal cash flow issues, and stabilizing, mediating, and building your wealth and hopefully building your wealth to the millions, okay? So this is the end of today's episode. Let me know what you learned today. That was so much valuable in the comments down below. This is Mike Gap signing out. I hope everyone's having a great one and stay strong.